Hi, and welcome to another continuation of the 3D modeling of this scuba shark in ZBrush. Um, I'm going to cover a little bit more of the development of this character in this video tutorial. Um, this one I'm focusing on this harpoon gun and building that um, and how best to kind of get that in place and then start modeling your hands around it. So I actually looked up some old vintage uh, harpoon guns because I, I felt like I needed a little bit more clarity in this harpoon gun. It seemed a little ambiguous. So I think this gave me a real good starting point for something that's a little more uh, along the lines of what, what a harpoon gun would look like specifically. Plus, I felt like this rope here would be a little bit of an issue when it came to uh, 3D printing and especially at the small size that uh, we're working with, this like three inches and under, two inches and under kind of a size. Um, so I wanted to try to figure out a way to eliminate that kind of thin rope as well. So this is kind of my inspiration here. And I already built out this gun. Um, I didn't want to bother taking too much time um, going over how to build it because it's pretty simple basic shapes. Um, but I wanted to show that what I did was I built it um, directly up and down in the center here before trying to rotate it in place. It's a lot more challenging to try to build something like in this angle like this. Um, it just doesn't make sense to, to build that way. Uh, so uh, I just built it all straight up and down. And you can see that there's separate pieces here for each part of the gun. So we got the barrel, we've got the um, harpoon that comes out, the little prong on the harpoon. Uh, the top part of it, uh, the trigger here, the trigger guard, uh, the stock, and then this kind of uh, metal piece that wraps around here. So you can see it's kind of along this lines, but I kind of used artistic license too to to make it look a little bit more like a like a gun um, per se. So. Um, I built all those pieces separately and so now what I want to do is I want to rotate this in place so I can start building out my arms and get it in position. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to locate where all these pieces are. Sometimes they're in a mixed order if you haven't been ordering these nicely and moving them around. Uh, so you just want to make sure that when you're merging these that these are all part of the gun and not like part of his arm or something that I, then you accidentally merge with with the gun. So um, what I like to do is I like to just kind of click through here and you know you see each piece highlighted on screen. So I kind of click through all of the items of the gun so I can make sure that I'm only merging parts of the of the object and not like his head or something so it stops here and it begins up here so I start with the top one here and I go to this merge option and click merge down it gives you this do you want to show this every time or skip until restart so I just hit skip until restart and then continue to merge down all these items and make sure you don't go too quickly to where you accidentally merge something you don't want to. So now you can see they're all one object now and then that way I can easily rotate them around and uh, put them in place the way we need to. So now that they're all an object together you can rotate them a couple ways. I kind of went over this in another tutorial, but I'll kind of cover it again. You can rotate in here using the, the rotate tool under deformation. So sometimes I use that as a starting point because uh, it can sometimes be a little easier to get 
the rotation the way you want to. And you can turn, you know, X, Y axis and stuff here. Um, so you kind of start getting it in place. And then sometimes I move over to this rotate tool at this point and then uh, rotate from here a little more. And you can always click and drag on this, then kind of move. Oh, you'll see this uh, issue I have here where I rotated with, with X being turned on. See how it's mirroring the, see these two little red dots? It's mirroring the the object from the left and right side. So you want to make sure you turn off X on your keyboard. So you just press X once to turn it off. That way it's not mirroring when you're trying to rotate and having weird issues. So I'm just going to go back a few steps to make sure I'm back to the original shape of the gun. And then now, if I rotate it, I'm not getting a weird bend and, and crack in my in my gun. A simple thing that's easily overlooked, but if you don't know what to look for, you might wonder why it's doing that, and it might be a little tricky to know how to fix it. And then another good thing to keep in mind while you're doing this is to take a step back and look at the angle of your original drawing and then flip back to the program so you can get kind of an idea of of where it's supposed to be lined up and you can see I'm kind of using both of these tools at the same time because sometimes it's easier to rotate a certain direction using the deformation palette than using uh, just this rotate tool up here. And then you can kind of move it in place. And when you're using this move, move tool, you want to click in the middle center of your three circles here in order to move the whole object just across space here. And sometimes this takes a little bit of time to get it exactly where you want it. So don't feel too frustrated by it if for some reason it's taking a little while to get it exactly where you want it. And I'm using the offset tool here too. And uh, so that's the gist of how to get an object into the place you want after you've built it. What I'm going to actually do is I actually already have this rotated exactly where I want it. So I'm going to go ahead and delete this version because I have one already ready to go here in the spot that I wanted it. And so once you have it in the spot you want, then you can start rotating your arm objects, which these objects aren't finalized, they're still kind of in the development stage, but you can start kind of placing your your arms where you want them to go, rotating them in place, you know, based on the, based on your object he's holding. And I feel like this is the better way to do it than to try to build the arms and hands first. So, I build my hands afterwards. So then what I can do is I can take like say this eyeball, I'll just duplicate that and then move that down. And I'll use this as kind of the basis for starting a hand. And this will be kind of the palm of the hand. Um, scale it under here, under deformation. And 
move it in place and then you can start uh, of course using your tools here whichever ones you prefer to edit your object and make it a little more like a, a palm of a hand rather than a, a sphere and then you can start adding fingers and stuff stuff like that um, so I'll show you what I did with the hands I'll delete this so here's a finished hand that I've done the fingers are all merged together and and everything and then I'll show you a hand that I'm still have as separate pieces so this hand on the other side these are all still separate fingers you can see and the palm and the thumb so I get those kind of to the place where they look about about right where they feel like they're generally the right um, shape and size and whatnot and then what I'll do is I'll merge these together which will allow me to get rid of these weird uh, I don't know if you can see that but this this weird knuckle thing going on where the shapes overlap each other I can kind of smooth that out like you see on the other hand um, once once I merge them together so the first thing I want to do is make sure that these are all next to each other, which they're not. The palm of the hand is way higher than the other objects. So I'm just going to move that down until it's kind of associated with the other ones all close together. So let's see where, we, where we're at. The palm is still a little high up in the palette. So let's see here. There's finger one, two, three. Palm is in there, and the thumb. So it doesn't really matter what order these are in. Like the palm can be in the middle, finger one can be in the top, or whatever. You just want to make sure that they're all next to each other so that you can merge them easily. So I just merge these down till my hand is one object all together and then you might want to go in here and you you start trying to smooth this out and you feel like all it's doing is emphasizing it more and it's not actually removing that weird crease what you need to do is go under geometry here under dynamesh and you 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 need to remesh this with dynamesh um, but the issue is you don't want to do it at the same resolution because what you'll get is you'll get some uh, issues between the fingers. I'll just go ahead and show you real quick where I control click on the gray to do a redynamish and you can see how it's all kind of wonky in the creases here and it looks terrible. That's because the mesh is a little low for the merge. So go ahead and hit undo what you're going to do is you're just going to change this resolution up a little bit and then when you remesh it you'll have less issues with that and you can go in here and holding down shift of course you can start smoothing out this stuff so I'll go ahead and smooth that out start making it feel like one object rather than several and you can tweak this as much as need be and then what I can do as well for in between these fingers if these creases don't seem quite good enough um, I can use the slash tool in here make sure to turn the intensity down a little bit 
and then I can actually go in here and crease them a little bit more defined like so and like I mentioned before it's important to um, define the creases and the edges and the details of your object a little bit more than you normally would because when you 3D print some of that detail is going to get lost and it's going to kind of blend into each other so the more defined you make it the more you'll get an output from 3D printing that you like for your prototype or if you're just doing a 3D print run or, or whatnot Something to keep in mind, too, is a lot of factories in China just make the molds directly off of the prototype. So if you send them a 3D printed model that it doesn't have all the detail in there, uh, they may end up making the mold based off of that rather than your 3D file. So it's important to uh, make sure that that 3D print is like as crisp and precise and detailed as possible. So that is how you do uh, the building of the hands and how you do uh, rotating of an object like a, like a harpoon gun after you make it. Um, one other thing just to show you as we're building this is these little rings around his glove areas. I've actually created those as well already. But what I did, which was a little bit simpler or faster, is uh, I started with the ring I had already created around his neck. And then I just duplicated that, shrunk it, did a little bit of inflate and mesh on that till I got it to the size that I wanted. And then you can go in here and move it a little bit more if need be and stuff. And that's where we're at right now. The next uh, tutorial, I'll cover uh, creating his mouth shape and everything. Thanks for watching.